There's something about God that is humbling, uh, humbling to the worshiper. There's something about when you have a connection with the Spirit of God will humble you in the house of God. Uh -huh. It will cause you to look at yourself and realize that you're not worthy of the blessings that God has given you from your Egypt until your land of Hebron. Man. Uh, I said that because uh, in the text you'll find that they have come to a place uh, in which God has promised the people, just as God has promised us, uh, that one day we'll come to a land where the streets are paved with gold. Somebody uh -huh. say it again. Yeah. Where the walls, the gates are made of, of ivory, and that you'll find no more pain, no more suffering. God has promised us that we have a promised land to go to. God had promised these people that they had a promised land uh, to go to. And Man. Uh, the problem is somewhere between uh, uh, the promise of God uh, and somewhere uh, in the finalization uh, of, the, of the practice of getting from the promise uh, uh, from the promise of God to the to the provisions of God uh -huh. is the ill practice of man, in which man seems to disconnect from God. Let me say this very quickly. There are a lot of promises I don't listen to. Man. But when God promises something, yes. when God says something, you ought to be able to say, I can count on that because God promises. Man. God says it yes, that I could not find an oath that I could, could give any higher than myself in Hebrews chapter 4. So therefore I made an oath. And and he makes an oath, he makes a promise, a promise from Abraham, the last even to now, into the lineage, into the, the lineage of Christ, his son. He makes a promise that God will never leave us comfortless. He will never leave us in a situation where we'll be eternally damned ever again. Man. And that's enough to say thank you, Jesus, and Man. praise God. Let's look very quickly at the text. And we'll <laughs> find uh, that it starts off with a promise. And I want you to relate that promise to the promise that God made to you. God says, surely. They shall not see the land which I swore to their fathers, neither shall any of them that promo provoke me see it. Mm. Surely. Now when God says surely, yeah. God said despite the earlier verses that the man of God, Moses, has prayed to God for the people of God because of their behavior, ill will, discontent with him. And they're lack most of all, and mainly because, let me stop here and say this for a minute. God is not surprised by our behavior. What God does is that God demands, and I want you to hear this very quickly, God demands that you see him as God. Preach. God demands that you understand he's God. Yes. And, and, and Moses has listened to the children of Israel complain and fuss and nag and complain and murmur against God from Egypt unto the land of Hebron. He's listening to them say, God should have done this and God should have done that. Just like some of us complain and murmur and fuss and complain. The leadership ain't this, this ain't that. And we even have the illuminated God to act like we have some type of authority in our own life. When God has all authority. Well. Uh, they're complaining, they fuss. And, and, and really everything that the children of Israel went through, they went through because of themselves. They went through because they continued to live to themselves and not in the spirit of God. Even Paul reminds us, remember in Romans chapter 15, verse uh, number 4, he said, what's been written four times was written for our learning that we might have patience and hope and comfort through the scripture. Man. Paul, uh, again, identifies in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, uh, verse number 2, or 2 Corinthians 10, verses 1 through 2, he said, neither murmur ye. He points right back to this group of people. He said, neither murmur ye, as some of them murmured and provoked the Lord thy God, but they were given to adultery. They were given to adultery behavior. They were given to a life without God. They lived themselves. And he even said, the people sat down and eat and rose up to play. They were very capable of coming to church and having church service and walking back out and not mentioning God the rest of the week. They were very capable of hating and fighting one another. They had a spirit in them that really resisted the power of God and everything that stood for God. They were against Moses. They tried him with Korah. They were against every leadership and every move that moved them close to God. And, and Paul said, don't be like those folks. Man. Because the end result is when they got to the promised land, God makes another profound promise. He said, not a one of you Neither your children will enter into the promised land. Well, I stop about to tell you. I stop about to warn you as a man of God. You may do what you please. You may move your membership. You may do whatever you please. But if you don't stop fighting against God, you nor your children will enter into the promised land. And I don't know about you, 
But when we sang that song, I have a home prepared mm. in the mansion's valley, just over mm. in the mm. glory land way. I want to be able to sing that song with joy in my heart. Man. Be able to sing that song that I know that God has something for me. Yes, I want to be able to sing that I trusted in God and I leaned on, leaned on his word and found God to be true. And know that God cannot tell a lie. Everything God says is and will be as God says it is. Well, preacher, what happened when you look at this great text? When we look at this great text, look at verse number 30. The Bible said, Doubtless, you shall not come into the land. Who shall not come into the land? The children of Israel who have now wandered in the wilderness around and around now have come to a place which has significant meaning. First of all, they come to Hebron. Hebron means a union. And you have to learn when you're spiritual to look for spiritual things when you're soldier on traveling or faith traveling. You have to look for spiritual things. You are led by spirit. You're uh -huh. either led by the spirit of Christ or you're led by the spirit of Satan. You're led by the spirit of Christ or you're led by a seductive spirit. You're led by, how do I know when I'm being led by a seductive spirit? If you somebody that's fussing, frowning up, and something got your joy in the house of God, you got to ask yourself, what kind of spirit are you sitting in the house of God with? Reach. He's led by one spirit or another. The, I told you before, and I'll tell you again, the spirit of God will never lead you from God. Man. It'll lead Man. you to God. Yes, There's only will. one spirit that leads you in division, that leads you in the issue, that leads you in the fighting and bickering. There's only one spirit that wants to fight all the time, and that's the spirit of the Antichrist. Man. And every now and again, I, I find myself sometimes letting that other spirit take over. And I said, no, and I, I made up my mind. I said, you know what? I'm not fighting with folk anymore. I'm not fighting with you anymore. I'm not sitting having long conversations, unbiblical conversation with folk when I'm simply trying to tell you the word of God and you trying to figure, figure out whether or not you're going to listen. Now, I'm not fighting with you anymore, but I'm standing on the word of God. Man. I'm trying to warn men, you better watch what spirit. If every time somebody say something and every time you turn around, you murmuring and fussing and looking and walking your eye, you better understand there's a spirit inside of you that's messing with you, that's going to stop you from making it to the promised land. Man. Listen to this. Listen to me. Look at this very quickly. Because there are a lot of folk, even in this very building right now, if God were to come back right now, would miss heaven, not because they lived in sin, but because they doubted God and his word. Well. Refused to trust God. Found themselves. Not only hurting themselves, but even their children were affected and affected by the unspiritual relationship while walking with the children of God. How can you be with the house of God? During this time, the children of Israel were the people of God. And yet the people of God missed the promise of God. Y'all now listen to me. Well, How the people of God miss the promise of God. They miss the promise of God because they don't recognize him as God. Man. How do you fix your mouth to argue with God? Listen to this. Doubtless you shall come to the land concerning which I have swore to make them in or to dwell them in. Save Caleb. Caleb here, the son of Jephthah, and Joshua, the son of, of Nun. Notice here in verse 30, Caleb and Joshua are mentioned. But in earlier verses, only in verse number 24, only Caleb is mentioned. Caleb is only mentioned in verse 24 because Joshua has now returned to the military ranks. He's gone back before Moses and says, out of the 12 spies that we've sent, we only have two. They have a good report. Uh -huh. uh, and when they received the word, it angered God. God says in the latter verses, let me tell you something. Not only have you spoke against me, I don't care what you saw. And I want y'all to pinpoint this part. See, some of you are going to miss this sermon, and God bless your soul. Some of you are going to get this sermon. Some of you are trying to court and flirt. You need to be focused on your Bible. Some of you are trying to just say, I don't know what you're doing, but you need to be focused on your word. But don't miss this part. Let me stop the sanctification. Watch what he said. He said, he said, he said, he said but, but now, as for your little ones, now watch this. And concerning the promise of God, I don't care what you saw when you went over to see the problems that are in front of you. Because I'll never just give you something. You're going to have to go take what I have for you. Right. I don't care how big the obstacle is. And I don't care how big the challenge is in your life. God says, I've already given it to you. But you are going to have to do something for yourself. Man. I don't, I don't care how big the, 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 the impact. Look, 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 let me help you understand this way. Look over uh, at verse chapter number. Uh, uh, let's look at chapter number, I believe, 13. Uh, no, let's say 14. Let, let's look at some of the things they saw. And they said to one another, uh, uh, in the first 14, they said to one another, uh, let us make a captain 
and let us return unto Egypt, that God has brought them to the brinks of Hebron, or the brinks of his promise, and their solution, their spiritual leader says, let's get another leader, and let's return back into bondage. Why do you want to turn back into bondage? Verse number 33 and chapter 13, and they saw giants, the sons of the Ancites, which come, which come of giants, which were of our, in our own sight as grasshoppers. In other words, they looked out and saw the enemy was bigger than they were, stronger than they were, and mightier than they were. But here's the problem. They didn't have the God oh, that they had. Man. Uh, you Amen. might be facing the problem right now. Yes, sir. You may be looking at some stuff. Your credit, man, your, 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 your stuff is all right. But here's the problem. And here's the blessing. You have a God on your side yeah. that's bigger than what you see. Man. And if you have a faith that can see past your obstacles, you can get the promise that God has for you. Preach. But until you live a life in which you stop looking at stuff in front of you and listen to what God is saying, I'm sending you to, you'll forever be sitting around in the house of God, murmuring and confessing, not connected to the Spirit of God. And so the text says in verse 24, Caleb didn't have such a spirit. The text says in verse 24, and in, in, in verse chapter 14, the text says that Caleb, I want you to hear this, Caleb had another spirit that was in him. Now, let me say that he had another spirit. He had another spirit. That, that don't sound like spoke the spirit here. You look at your neighbor and say, neighbor. Neighbor. Caleb. Hey. Had another spirit. Ah, what do you mean had another spirit? He, he had a spirit that didn't worry about the giants that was in front of him. He had a spirit that didn't worry about the mistakes that had been numbered in the past. He had a spirit that didn't worry about who liked him and who didn't like him. He had a spirit that said God will has and God is going to take him to another level. Man. Is there anybody here that's got another spirit in them right now? Well, you're not going to sit in the house of God and not praise God. Is there anybody here that have a spirit in them that want to lift their hands Man. to God because Man. God is God? Yes, God. Is there anybody that's got another spirit in them that will not let the false teaching of some in the body of Christ stop them from worshiping God? Yes, Is there anybody with a spirit of praise in the house of God right now? God did something for you. Is there anybody with a pain of spirit in the house of God? Can you say amen? Amen. Hey, the Bible says Caleb had another spirit in him. What do you mean? Thank you, sir. What do you mean another spirit? But I'm glad that you asked that question. Caleb recognized why some folks saw giants, some folks see the negative. All Caleb saw was the positive. He saw Hebron as a union or reunion with God's inheritance that God had promised him. He looked at Joshua as the antitype or a type of the coming of a Savior. Caleb, his name is literally translated in Hebrew, Kalab, meaning uh, wholeheartedly. When we put these things together, Caleb's spirit was unified with God. His spirit believed in the coming of the Messiah. Uh -huh. He had only put it even to his death that whatever it took, he was going to see the promise of God in his life. Man. And I say this to you, I'm almost through. Until you reach a point of your Christianity that you don't have time to look at the giant problems in our culture. And you have time to look at the problems around you. But you know you're in a union with God. You know that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. You know that God has all power in his head. You'll forever stand outside the promised land instead of moving to where God has, has promised you and take over the promised land. Man. This is what Caleb said. This is what Caleb, Caleb said in Numbers chapter 14. Caleb says in Numbers 13 and verse number 31, Caleb still the people. Caleb heard all this murmuring. Moses ain't right. Joshua ain't right. They ain't big enough to get us across the borders. They ain't good enough. Let's find somebody else. He listened to all the murmuring and complaining. God left us here to die in the wilderness. Don't you know when you speak like that about God, God not only cursed them, but he cursed their children. Good God Almighty, there's somebody in here who is so less full of faith that they cursed their children and left their children in a damnable position. Well. There's some of us right here who have a faith that's so pitiful. Your child already exemplified child without faith. There's some of us right now that have cursed a generation after generation after generation because we don't have the faith that Caleb had. But Caleb had a faith that not only did he get the blessing, but even his seeds got the blessing. Man. What are you saying? When you have a spirit in you, the spirit of God in you, God not only blesses you, Caleb, but God bless your children. Yes, 
sir. Y'all about to say amen. Man. Every parent in here, a dad that can do it, who lacks faith in God. Listen to what Caleb said. Caleb said in Numbers 13 and verse 31, be quiet. Stop all that fussing. Quit acting like that. Why are you sitting up ignoring what Moses is saying? Don't you know? We can do it. Man. There's somebody, look at what the options are in front of Uptown Church of Christ. And you can look at what you think you see. But Caleb sees something you don't see. Because he doesn't look through the eyes of man. But he looks through the, he looks through the spirit of faith he has that's been instilled in him by God. Man. He said, be quiet for a minute. Next time somebody walks you talking crazy, you know what you got to tell him? Be quiet. Be quiet. Be quiet. When somebody's going to tell you, you know what's wrong, what's going to tell you? Be quiet. You know why? Because some of the reasons the church don't move is because folk in the church run their mouths so much. God curses the church itself and stops the growth himself. God, y'all all right? Y'all was in the text? Some of, one of the reasons, when you see a church not growing, it's not because of one person. There's a spirit in the church and when God said it has to die out. When you see folk leaving, it's because God's design is for them to leave. Man. And they think they're right. When you see folk, it's because there's a spirit. Because the spirit of God don't send people out doing problems, but the spirit of God send people to each other doing problems. Man. God said, y'all look at me. Let's, let's go back to the text. Let's see how I can get through the Bible. Watch this. 14 verse number. 14 verse number 30. 32. But as for you, your carcasses, they shall fall in the wilderness. The wilderness represents the world. You know why you 21 look like you 45? Because you live a life without God. You know why you got a head full of somebody else's hair in your head? Because you haven't lived a life with a brain in it. That suggests you understand that God is God all by himself. He's sovereign all by himself. You know why you walk around here and people trying to figure out what's wrong with you? Half clean, won't shave, won't bathe. You know what's wrong with you? There's another spirit in you. And God, you already did. Because that which is holy carries itself holy inside and out. Don't you know cleanliness is next to godliness? Somebody ought to say amen. When folk got another spirit in them, they got a spirit in them that everything that God gave, everything God did for them, they carry themselves a certain way. You know how folk walk into the house of God looking like anything? There's a spirit that helped them walk in the house of God doing any kind of thing. You know what the problem is? It's not that they see it. There's another spirit. Spirit. Amen. 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 I want you to watch this. He said, now listen. I'm not going to deal with it. all the stuff y'all were doing. God says, I'm upset. Not because of the adultery that was practiced. But that upset me. I'm upset not because you keep doubting me. But I'm upset. He's talking to Moses. He said, I'm upset with them because I brought them to this place. And they turned around and vowed a vow in my presence. And said that God should have left me dead. Man. Then the Gentile brought me to his promise. In other words, Hebron is a place of union, reunification. Hebron is just on the other side. They get to a place of union with God, a place of closeness with God, i.e. the church. And they come in the church and say, I should have stayed out of the world. Mm. God says, okay. Okay, sis, that's your, your request. I'm going to honor your request. You don't want what I have for you. <laughs> a land that flows with milk and honey. How many of y'all want land flow with milk and honey? All right. yeah. you know, and I'll tell you, I really don't drink milk and honey, but if it's free <laughs> and it's flowing, I would need to have milk and honey. I, 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 just, I just give me a cup. Y'all all right? Yeah, all right? Here are a few people talking for thousands of people. Hundreds of thousands of people. Twenty thousands of people. And they're standing there and they're complaining and they're fussing and because of their mouth and their negative attitude, God says, I'm going to kill every last one of you. Everything from the age 20 and down will die. I'm going to kill it. I'm going to let it die in the wilderness, not because I'm doing it, but because you requested it. <laughs> well, y'all listen. I, I, I'm not going to do it. I'm going to honor your request. How many of you have had your spirit say, I give up? Mm. How many of you say, I give up? God says, then I'm going to let you give up if that's what you want to do. How many of you have fought back and said, I'm not going to never give up? That's a spirit in you that say, I'm not, I want to give up, but I'm not going to give up. God will do what you asked him to do. Man. And they asked God to leave him in the wilderness and let him die. Y'all look at me funny again. I'm going to go back to my Bible. Okay, okay. Verse 33. 
and the children shall wander in the wilderness for 40 years. And they will bear your orders. There are some children who are bearing the indecent behavior of our spiritual mothers right now. There are some, there are some young ladies whose mama is so carnal that they're carnal right now. Lack the spirit of God in their life right now. There are some fathers who are so sinful that their sons are bearing his iniquity. And the Bible says that they'll bear your hordes. Your corpses shall be what? Wasted where? In the wilderness. In the wilderness. After what? After the number of days. Now watch this. After the number of days in which you what? Search the land. out the land. Even 40 days, each day for a year. You shall bear your iniquities even 40 years. And you shall, uh, and you shall know the preacher of my promise. God says for every day you didn't trust me. For every day that you went there, you went down in there and you called yourself spying out the land, I'm going to give you a day for a year. You went down there 40 days, 40 days times one, one, one year is how many? 40. 40 years. So you were wandering around here for 40 years. And in that 40 years, I'm going to accomplish something, Moses. What are you going to accomplish? Now listen, Moses, Moses praying. Verse number 20, I'm almost through. Moses praying. And the Lord said, I pardon according to your word. Let me go up to his prayer. Uh, verse 15. Now that thou shalt kill all the people as one man, then the nation shall have heard of the fame of thee, will be speaking, saying, Because the Lord was not able to bring the people into the land uh, that he swore to them, therefore he has slain them in the wilderness. And now I beseech thee, let the power of the Lord be great according to thou hast spoken, saying, The Lord is long suffering. He's great mercy, his great mercy, forgiving iniquity and transgression by no means. Clearing, clearing the guilty, visiting the iniquity upon the fathers and the children, upon the third and the fourth generation. The man of God is praying for the people of God to understand that when God promises something, when God says something, you better act like an honor is God's plan, is yeah. God's word. But God says, okay, Moses, I won't kill them immediately. But what I will do is I, make, I let what they say take place. They'll wonder in the wilderness for 40 years. And they'll wonder, and they'll grow tiresome, and they'll grow frustrated, and they'll, they'll go through all the things that people go through out in the world. I want to talk to you this morning that, and tell you this morning that there are many folk who are just wondering in the world. They are taking one position one day and another position the next day because they're in that wilderness state in which God has said, you won't enter into my hand. But how do I Enter into the promise. Praise be to God that because of this man named Jesus Christ, the Son uh -huh. of God, He took the curse off of me. Man, we don't have to wonder in the world anymore, trying to find happiness in a joint or a bottle Thank or you. sex yes, or sir. false churches. We don't have to try to go to a church that make me feel a certain way. But I come to a church because I have the feeling in the church. I said something right there. When I come to a church house, I bring a spirit into the church. Man. The Bible said Caleb had a spirit in him. Yes, sir. Caleb came in the presence of God with a spirit with him. When you come to the house of God, the house of God is not going to be any better than the spirit you bring with you. Yes. If you didn't come to the house of God to praise God, then you'll walk around when it's time for the preach word. You'll look off when the song is singing. You'll drop your head and play on your phone when it's time to pray. And you'll go to sleep when something gets close to you. But if those brought those people who brought a spirit with them, uh -huh. and they hear the word of God preached, and the spirit starts to move, they'll raise their head and give God glory. Amen. Yes, sir. I'm not going to be 
praising God. No, sir. You are not letting me out praise. Can I pray? Can I praise God? Can I give a better report than you? No, because God's been good to you personally. And you ought to have a testimony. And somebody told me how good to me. Now let me tell you how God good God is. Man. Oh yeah, I one brother said, Well, God, God did this for me. And I'm sitting over my spirit. And I'm saying, Boy, I want to tell him what God did for me. And he said, there, he said, Well, God did X, Y, Z, and God left me. I said, oh, my, my, my spirit is moving around. I'm going to say, but no, this is you. He's he, he going to know. Somebody's going to tell him. Wait, well, let me tell you something else. Well, God took me through hurricanes and storms in my life. He saved me. Amen. God brought me to the scrupulous brethren in my life. God has brought me folk who would, who would discord the men of God. I tread and think nothing of it. That God has brought me through from making uh, sixty-five, seventy-five thousand dollars uh, to, to, to down the wave of low head steel. I still live like I'm a child of God. God, I say it again. God brought me from one disaster to another. When I didn't have ears, He made my ears meet. Sometimes when I was ill and sick, I laid in hospital beds. I had IVs stuck in me. I had the surgeon standing over me, and he looked at my heart and said, "We ain't got to do nothing. Something must have happened." Oh, we don't need.